In this video you'll learn how to complete a single address ticket. We'll start off on the ticket dashboard screen. Let's begin by clicking the new button in the upper right hand corner of the screen. The contact information provided during registration has been automatically entered under the excavator information section. Changes cannot be made to the fields that have been grayed out. You can make changes to the rest of the information as needed. Fill in a fax number if you have one, your call back hours, and a cell phone. The field contact is the person utility companies will contact when they have questions about your job or the dig site. Your name, along with the phone number you registered with, are automatically entered. If you need utilities to contact someone else, enter a first and last name, select the contact method from the drop-down icon, and enter the required information. The working for field is for whom the work is being done. Enter your first and last name or type self. Enter the type of work you are doing. For example, installing a fence or irrigation, building a pool or landscaping. If you have a subcontractor you would like to add to your ticket, click on the Add Remove Subcontractors link. Click Create New. Enter the required information. And click Add. Then click Close. Remember, the subcontractor field is not required and anyone digging should have their own locate ticket. Before moving forward, there are help links located at the top right hand corner of each section. Click on the link. This gives you detailed descriptions for each field, making it easy for you when you have any difficulty throughout the ticket process. Next is the date section. The first questions regarding underwater defaults to know for homeowners. Now, you'll be asked to enter the date and time you plan to start working. By default, the Exactix system sets it at two full business days, not including the day you request the ticket. This is the legal time frame utilities have to respond to your ticket. You can change the date and time you plan to start working by clicking on the start date and using your mouse to select the date on the calendar. If you need to change the time, the option is below the calendar. You cannot enter a start date and time that is before the legal time frame in the calendar. This is the only field that indicates when your work is to begin. The start date and time should not be typed in any other fields on the ticket. Before we move on to the next section, we will cover the remainder of the fields that are auto-completed in this section. The renewal date is the date the ticket must be renewed for it to not expire. The expiration date is the date the ticket will expire and no longer be valid. The due date indicates the date and time, by law, utilities have to respond to your request. The next section covers the work information. First, how deep are you digging? If you know how deep you are digging, enter the number in the first field and select the unit from the drop-down menu in the second field. Units are feet, inches, yards, centimeters, meters, and unknown. If the depth is unknown, place a zero in the first field. Next, we ask if you will be using machinery? You must answer either yes or no. If you are unsure, default to yes. Is the area where you are digging going to be marked out with white paint? Yes, no, or unknown. Pre-marking your proposed dig site with white paint, flags or chalk helps utility companies easily identify where you are proposing to dig. For trees, mailboxes, and other smaller installations, outline the area. If you're installing irrigation or a fence, Mark the path of those items. How long will the work take? Enter a number in the first field. Select days, hours, months, unknown, weeks, or years to indicate period of time. If the duration is unknown, place a zero in the first field. Will there be directional drilling? Yes, no, or unknown. Is a permit needed? Yes, no, or unknown. If you answered yes to a permit needed, please type the permit number in this field. If you do not have the permit number, enter an A for not applicable. Next, is this ticket required as a result of damage to an underground line? Yes or no? The site information begins with the dig site type. It automatically defaults to street address and selects Florida. The home address you provided during registration has been entered along with the place. Begin entering the county name where the dig site is located and select the proper name from the drop-down. To further pinpoint your dig site location, you will enter the nearest cross street. A drop-down menu shows you the nearest cross street and their distances to the dig site address. Select the appropriate near street. 
If it is within a quarter mile of the dig site address, select the quarter mile box. If farther, skip the check box and add the approximate distance into the how far field. If the dig site address does not result in a drop down list of nearest cross streets, then you will need to enter it manually. Enter the name of the community if it applies and then the lot number if you have it. The next field is where the digging will take place. Select all that apply. Use the remarks section to give the locator information making it easier to access your dig site. Examples may include a gate code, directions or a dog in the backyard. If what is included in the check boxes is not sufficient and or not enough information to explain where you are working, place your ticket in incomplete. This process will be covered shortly. The header section is a short phrase to catch the immediate attention of the receiving party or member utility. This field is not a required field and may not be viewed or processed by the utility locators. If you do not have any information to place in the header, then leave the field blank. You're not quite ready to select released yet. The map on the right should look like this. The area shown in blue is the parcel data. It determines the utilities to be notified. The roadway highlighted in red indicates the nearest intersecting street. Instances when parcel data is not available, the area shown in blue is the address range and it determines the utilities to be notified. New developments less than two years old can generate the street not found message. When this happens, choose the option for incomplete. Then contact 811 and select option 1 to have one of our agents complete manual mapping of the location. Use incomplete when the checkboxes are not sufficient to cover the area where you are digging as mentioned earlier. Verify that all information is correct. Then click released at the top right hand corner of the screen. If at any time before you complete your ticket, you want to cancel the request, click on the abort discard button in the same location. After clicking released, you will see a list of member utilities we notify with underground facilities near your dig site. If you want to review the ticket information again before sending your request, click the Back to Ticket button and you will be brought back to the main screen to make any necessary revisions. When you are ready to submit your information, click Send Ticket. You are now given your ticket number and excavator ID. Save the ticket number and excavator ID in a safe place. If you provided an email address during ticket entry, a copy of the ticket will be sent to you. You can now select Close. Now watch our video on how to view responses with an Xactix account.